podcast and go live? Oh, there we go. I already did. <laughs> we are we are live. Welcome, everyone. Uh, hopefully, you can see us on Facebook today. Uh, it's my fault. I had to. I had to. Uh, I had to start a little late today because my wife's out of town, and I had to pick up my seventeen-year-old at school. So uh, we're starting at three thirty. And if you're watching us from Facebook, please give us a shout so we know it's working. We know YouTube is working, but we don't know that Facebook is working. So uh, an unusual snag here in our production. Usually things go pretty smoothly, but totally my fault. Ah, yep. Lily Renzetti. Oh, Lily. How do you like that vice, Lily? <laughs> I'll keep mine Good. hidden for now. <laughs> uh oh, Lily's going to be mad at you. So it looks like it looks like we have we definitely have Facebook people here. So welcome. And uh, before we begin, today is a special day. Julia, feliz Hi. cumpleaños! Oh, Happy thanks. birthday! Oh, I, I want like, everybody. <laughs> I want everybody to sing along with me. Are you oh, ready? No. Happy birthday right, to you. <laughs> Happy <laughs> birthday <laughs> to you. <laughs> Happy birthday, dear <laughs> Julia. Oh my God. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday <laughs> to you. <laughs> there. Right. That's why I wanted you to stay on, Julia. Thank you. Now that I'm fully, fully blushing. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> how can you? How can you be blushing online? <laughs> Look at it. My face is totally. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Uh, Twenty five feels great. You're getting All a right. lot of Felice. You're getting a lot of a lot of happy birthdays from Warsaw and South wow. America. And thank you, thank you. Love, lovely right. voices, Mac. You're you are lying. <laughs> you are lying through your teeth. Anyway. All right. Have fun, y'all. I'll be in the back. Bye, Julia. Thank you, everybody. Today we're going to tie a merkin. And uh, this is a one of the first flies that was developed specifically for permit, and it was uh, developed, I think, in partnership with of uh, Del Brown, the late Del Brown, who uh, holds, as far as I know, holds the record for the most permit caught in a lifetime. We looked it up, and he caught five hundred and thirteen permit. Um, most of those on this fly we're going to tie today. And most of them uh, with the, the great guide, Steve Huff. Steve Huff is considered by many to be the greatest uh, saltwater guide who ever lived. So uh, don't ask us if it works. <laughs> it does. <laughs> and um, not only that, but um, this fly tied in smaller sizes uh, is a good bonefish fly. It in uh, slightly larger sizes or in this size, size six, we're going to tie it today is a great striped bass fly when they're on the flats. It's a great redfish fly. So anything, really anything in salt water that eats crabs. And it's, fu it's funny because there are a lot more realistic looking crabs out there, crab imitations. Uh, this one is sort of suggestive impressionistic it doesn't really look that much like a crab other than the shape and the legs but um it works it works and um you know i my my philosophy and i think it's yours too tim if if a pattern works then you don't question it you just tie it and fish it <laughs> yep absolutely yeah and this, this one does and to me it's a lot simpler than than many of those other crab patterns that that have a lot of epoxy or you mm -hmm. know a flexible mesh and all sorts of crazy claws and things like that and uh, it, it it's it's not a fast fast tie but it's not a difficult one really no no it's not it's not a difficult one um yeah it just takes some time yeah uh, but yeah, it, yeah. It, it it's a great fly it's very durable and uh, doesn't use any exotic materials whatsoever. So uh, it's a great it's a great fly to have in your box. If you do any saltwater fishing at all, you need to have some some merkins in your box. Absolutely. Do you, now, do you, do you consider this a relatively easy fly? I, I do. I 
yeah. as, as usually the case. I, I have a couple like cheater tricks that I use when I'm tying yeah. it, um, which <laughs> I know it, it uh, it's probably not not uh, not proper, if you will, but uh, it, it really really mm -hmm. helps out and to to me helps make the the whole thing more stable and mm -hmm. and durable and and less uh -huh. prone to spinning around and things like that. So. Uh, well, it will be interesting minutes. to see how you tie it, Tim. <laughs> As usual, I'm sure we will tie it differently. Well, and I also, I, I did not have a size six hook that was appropriate for the pattern. Uh -huh. So I have a four. I'm going to be a little bigger um, than, than a six today. Sorry. Oh, yeah, but they're easier on a size four. They are. You, you've, well, you're already the... starting with an advantage, Tim. <laughs> And the, the fact of the matter is the the with the colors that I'm going to tie it today, it, it's meant to look like uh, we have these crabs called lady crabs. They're they're up mm -hmm. and down the East Coast and they're the ones that when you're in swimming in the ocean, they're the ones that are biting your feet all the time. And uh, striped bass in particular just love them and really love them this time of the year when they, they start coming out and getting active and and so kind of, kind of an appropriate fly for right now in the color. This is, um, I have a picture of one that that's what a lady crab looks like and kind of, kind of purpley spots and, and, uh, orange tipped claws and, and then sort of tan, um, uh, buff colored for the rest of it. Now, are you going to go way off base here on this pattern? Are you going to take a lot of liberties well, with this pattern? I, to, to find liberties, Tom. Well, you're starting with, first of all, you're starting <laughs> with a hook size that's bigger than mine. So it's going to be easier okay. for you. Okay. It, it probably you don't is. Have, you don't have a size six saltwater hook. Um, no. Um, that yeah, is size sure. six. Yeah. That, that, yeah, that's right. small yeah. for me. Yeah. I, I'm. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I'm about to go to Belize and they recommend sixes and eights. And I'm not tying eights. this in eights. Yeah, I'm not tying wow. this in size eight. <laughs> yeah, I, I so, heard that, that they, they want real small down there. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so. The perimeter, the perimeter is smaller. I, I know that, uh, I know that um, you know, in the in the Keys in the Bahamas, they use size twos sometimes. Yeah, big yeah. Ones. Yeah, um, crabs are. Not small. And this, yeah. I mean, even on a size four for, for one of those lady crabs, lady crabs are generally a good bit bigger than that. And, mm -hmm. and uh, um, I, I've tied them on a two aught hook before and used them for springtime striped bass. Oh, wow. So, yeah. <clears throat> wow. Well, okay. All right. Anyway, who so wants let's to start? See. Well, this, have we ever decided this is my pick? Because I needed some Merkins. That's why. <laughs> and, okay and plus it has some plus it uses some some techniques that i don't think we've shown before so. yeah yeah i agree um, do you want do you want me to start yeah go ahead all right oh, god <laughs> all right first of all i am starting with a size six standard saltwater hook unlike some some people who are going to cheat and tie down a bigger <laughs> hook so i'm pulling out my size six hook and i'm going to put it in my renzetti vice lily <laughs> <laughs> i'm uh I'm trying to butter her up because I'm angling for one of those purple ones that Cheech has. Yeah, I saw that. That's a thing of beauty. Yeah. And uh, typically, this is tied with chartreuse thread. Are, are you using chartreuse thread? I, well, I, I no. Oh. In, in a nutshell, I'm not. And because cause the, the crab that I... I I have flies that I need to tie as well, Tom. I'm not going to Belize, but um, springtime's coming here in New Jersey, and, and uh, I need crab patterns. So, all right, I'm look, going guys, with tan. I'm tying this the traditional way. He can, Flagler can do whatever he wants. I'm tying a traditional merkin. So okay. Anyway, I'm going to start with chartreuse 
thread and I'm going to start it pretty close to the eye. Uh, you're going to put dumbbell eyes on here and get, get yourself a little nice tight base of thread, whatever color thread you use. <laughs> It's going to be a long afternoon, isn't it? Yeah, it is going to be. And then uh, you take a, I like a size size small on this uh, dumbbell eye. And you can use, you can use any color you want, but traditionally it was, I think it was the plain lead eye that they originally used, but I'm going to, I'm going to use a silver, silver dumbbell eye because I don't have lead eyes. Um, I don't use lead. So I'm going to put my silver dumbbell eyes on top of the hook shank, and I'm going to add a little drop of super glue. If my super glue will open up. Uh-oh. Oh, there it goes. Just a little drop. In fact, I'm going to blot that because I just want, just want a little to help keep that thread from from uh, sliding in the shank. And then I'm going to start at an angle and take some cross wraps. And then I'm going to push it straight and secure it the other way. Make sure those eyes are straight. And don't be afraid to, you know, really, really pound on the thread there. And then once you get that to the point where it's secure, then you want to come around the base, just like a Clouser minnow or anything else with lead eyes, to uh, attach that. And then I'm going to wind back to the bend of the hook. Should I should I keep going or should I stop here? Um, why don't why don't you just because I I have a really strange kind of tying sequence here, Tom, and I, I think it might make more sense to the audience if I if I went for a little bit. That's okay yeah, with go you. Ahead. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anywho, oh, um, why do I do this? <laughs> why Why do I let you? Why do I let you freestyle do these things? <laughs> uh, so I'm going to start out. Yes, it's a size four hook. It's it's a uh, a stinger hook. I kind of like the the gap, uh, the rear gap on these things uh, for for crab patterns. And I am going to be using a non-traditional, apparently tan, a UTC 140 through the air thread. And can you tell Julia to switch? There you go. Thank you. Del, Del Brown. Del Brown. <laughs> He's rolling over in his grave. In his um, grave. Yeah. Anyway, I'm going to take a few wraps rearward. You better hope Steve Huff isn't watching. I'm sure he's not. Um. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go straight in with some crystal flash. And this is this is kind of a root beer colored crystal flash sort of matches with the color that I'm going for on the, on this uh, lady crab. And what I'm going to do here, let me zoom out just a little bit, is I'm going to take the the strands i've got like three strands four strands something like that i'm gonna fold them around fold the midpoint i'm gonna be trimming these anyhow so it doesn't really matter and then just start working them back on the underside of the hook and i'm gonna go back i i only go back to about i don't know the barb really not not all the way back down separate a few to either side doesn't doesn't really matter so i'm only going back to about the point on that long shank hook yeah it is a long shank hook and sure you got enough real estate there tim i i do it's <laughs> it, it's makes for a lot more tie-in stuff um mm -hmm. i'm gonna snip it off about a hook in length about like that so i kind of have even even amounts on either side. Then I'm going to go back up. And if I could keep going, Tom, that would just be wonderful. But here's the kind of a, my, my own thing, really, I guess. 
and I started doing it on half and halves a while ago. The the one that's half clouser, half half deceiver. And this is just 60 pound test mono. And the reason I like the 60 pound test is it's about the same diameter as the hook shank. And so what I'm going to do is just going to try to get it. It's hard to get started, but I'm going to get it tied in and just keep it on the near side of the hook, just on one side. Take it back pretty far. And then I'm going to use wire cutters and snip this part off. But wh what I've oh, why done. Don't you helicopter, why don't you helicopter it? <laughs> it's a good question because Mono doesn't <laughs> helicopter. Um, what, what I'm doing here, and again, it's kind of cheating, is I'm trying to build like a, a flat deck, if you will. Add some, add some width to the hook shank. And it just, to, to me, it makes particularly dumbbell eyes, just that much more solid on the hook shank, if you will. And I'm, I'm going to hit it with the, uh, the super glue as well. The other thing I'm going to do is back here, I'm just going to take another little piece, same thing. And I started doing this tying, you know, the tails on the half and halves where you, you have that, the saddle hackle. And you want it to be vertical. And this little extra piece really helps. Again, it, it makes a flat spot and makes it much easier to keep those, those feathers vertical. This was not in a pattern description that it, I said. I know you. it wasn't, but just going to add some super glue and get that back thing. It's a little asymmetrical, but doesn't seem to have any real effect. And then just to get caught up with Tom, I, I too, I'm using the, the dumbbell eyes. I, I'm, I'm not good at pronouncing. You probably know his last name, Alan Callow. Is that it, Tom? Straight I know who you're talking time. about. I'm not sure how it's pronounced or Kalo. Kalo, yeah. Yeah. His, uh -huh. he, I, he's got a great book on sight fishing for striped bass. And uh -huh. one of the things that he really advocated was um, making sure that you didn't have anything too shiny on the fly. Yeah. And he he went to the uh, not the extreme, but he, he'd actually nail polish the, the hook shank to take the shine off of it. So anyway, what, well, it, what this, what this does is it gives you that platform. So the eyes just almost can't rotate around the hook shank. That's, that's all it's really doing. Okay. I think we're caught okay. up. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to put my tails on now. Okay. And I'm going to, the, the original pattern, which is what I'm tying, <laughs> unlike other people, called for Cree, uh, large Cree saddle hackles or neck hackles. And so I'm going to find four of them. And I'm going to come up here. You know, Cree hackle is, is, is kind of rare, and it's, it's nice for dry flies. But I'm going to come up here uh, to these big feathers in the place where you never use the feathers, which is nice because I got a use for these these big feathers and I'm going to find four of them that are fairly wide fairly evenly matched there's two that I've got I'll find another two here there's a couple more oh. And you could use grizzly, you can use brown. I'm sure Tim's not going to use Cree. I saw a grizzly hackle. And then you're going to you're going to put them with the shiny sides together so they splay outward. So I got to line them up. So I've got these so that they're going to splay out like so or they it's going to help them splay out. Cuz these are the claws. And I'm going to 
You want these, I think, a little bit shorter than, than the hook shank. You don't want them too long. So right about there, maybe. And I'm just going to kind of straddle them on there. I'm going to keep them long for a minute. And I'm just going to tie those in. With about four turns. And you can see they're not splayed, but I'm going to fix that. And then uh, snip them off, even with the eyes. And you don't want to strip these hackle stems, because if you do, uh, the, the, the feathers can pull out. So you want to, you want to keep the, the feathers in place. And then I'm going to go back, and I'm going to pull these up. and separate them, so two on each side. And then I'm just gonna do one, one little figure eight around them. And that will, that will separate these so that they look like the claws of a crab. And then I'm gonna tie in my flash, Tim, and then, uh, then I'll turn it over to you. Okay. And I think the original Merkin used Flashaboo, but I like Crystal Flash. But Tim used Crystal Flash, so I think I'm safe. It, yeah, but I, I or, believe you're right. The original was Flat, flat was Flash, Flashaboo. Uh, Flashaboo. Yeah. I, just, I just like Crystal Flash. And you don't want much of this. I, I, I agree with Alan that um, most of these flies, saltwater flies, have too much Flash. So I've just got four or five strands. I wetted it. And I'm going to make it about the same length as those claws. And then just tie this in on top. Guess I could snip that. Even with the eyes. And come forward, binding that down. And then back again to the tail. Over to you, Tim, and that's what that's what it's going to look like. All right, let me get uh, focused in here first with this I camera. I see an errant hackle fiber there. Oh, where am I? Oh, um, I don't have a Cree neck. I have a uh, light, light, uh, this is a ginger grizzly, so sort of like it. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take feathers from, uh, this is a saddle, and and I, I use the long saddle, you know, for, for buggers, things like that. But uh, this is getting a little lean down here. I, I do use these feathers quite a bit uh, for different things. Anyway, they, I just they don't wanna, have to be, I, oh, I'd ahead. like I'm to sorry. read it. Well, I just want to read a comment from the great Roger Bird. And you can see it there on the screen. Thank you, Roger. <laughs> I said it's going to be a long afternoon. <laughs> and we started late. So I have two of them, just, just like Tom did, but uh, I'm going to do things a little differently. I'm going to strip off, just going to guesstimate uh, here, I'm gonna strip off, and these, I go up here, I forgot I was supposed to. Uh, I think you need to come out a little bit. Uh, no, I don't, actually. Don't. Okay. But thank you. You're welcome. I'm going to go to, to right, Listen to Joan. right about there. And I am going to go kind of over the stems, but I'm going to pull the fibers underneath. And then it's kind of flat on flat because of that piece of mono. I am going to bind these down really well. And there they just kind of naturally curve out. And hopefully I can do the same on the other side. Similar hackle feathers. 
You sure they're not going to pull out? They might. You put enough super glue on anything, Tom, and it's not going to pull out. Yeah. I just remember the one time I got to fish with the great Steve Huff, I had a bunch of tarpon flies tied up with saddle hackles, and we were sitting in the boat. (laughs) And he said, let me see your flies. And I said, okay, because I always like to use my own flies. And um, each and every one of them, he picked them up, and he pulled on the heckle. So well, that's kind of a. They, they all came <sighs> off. And so he said, We'll be using my flies today. <laughs> I learned my lesson the hard way. Can't say to him. Uh, I, I can't move. So we're going to just have to deal with that for just a second. Now, can you see? Yeah. No, not really. Yeah. So I'm going to wrap rearward and then just pull those under just a little bit like that. That's terrible, Tim. You can show show it better than that. A little bit more focus. Wow. I know. Tough room. So they're just kind of splaying out on their own. And I am absolutely going to put some super glue over those bases and lock everything down. Yeah, I know. You better. Don't want Steve Huff yelling at me. Yeah. So should I tell the story, the, the Del Brown story? Yeah. So uh, this is from the the Orvis archives. So back many years ago, I was in charge of all the fishing products at Orvis, including flies. And Lee Perkins, the late Lee Perkins, chairman of the board, who was president then, uh, fished the same places of Del Brown. He knew Del Brown, and he found out about this fly, and. He asked if we could put it in the catalog, and Dell and Steve Huff said, sure. So put it in the catalog as Dell's Merkin. And a couple of years later, I got a phone call from Dell, and he said, Tom, can you do me a favor? And I said, sure, Dell. Um, he said, my wife looked up Merkin in the dictionary. Can, can you change the name of that fly to Dell's Permit Fly? And we did. And if you don't know what a Merkin is, people look it up. Because <laughs> we're not going to, Tim and I decided we're not going to go We're not going to go there. <laughs> uh, Kim, Kim Durkee knows what it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Anyway. Oh, is it my turn? I think it is. <laughs> okay. All right. So I am going to take my beautiful Ranzetti vice. <laughs> and, oh, wow. And the nice thing about Ranzetti vice is you can turn it over and still have good clearance. So I'm going to just turn it over and it'll be, it'll be still in line, which is one of the beauties of a Ranzetti vice. Adjust my light here a little bit. And then to, uh, for the body of this fly, you can use uh, lots of different things. Uh, tr- the, traditional, uh, the traditional tying of it was with a product called Aunt Lydia's Rug Yarn. And I don't think it's available anymore. I know I have a skein of it somewhere, but I couldn't find it. Um, but I believe it was an Antron yarn. So anyways, I've got, um, I've got two colors of Antron. And th- you want to tie this fly with, uh, with two different colors of yarn. You can use wool. Uh, some people use EP fiber for this. And i just show you. Um, here's, a darker, here's a darker version of a Merkin. You know, this is an olive and a brown, so it's for darker bottoms. 
But the, what I'm going to tie is, you know, some people tie their crabs in tan or cream, and some people tie them in uh, olive. And I'm going to have alternating stripes of tan and green, hoping that the fish pick what they want out of it. And so what you want to do is just take your take your yarns and if they're on a card like this, you want to cut it at the, the point where it where it goes at an angle and just cut yourself a bunch of these. Because you're gonna need probably, I don't know, five, six of each color, depending on whether you're using a long shank oversized hook or not. Now I'm going to take my cream and I'm going to just cut myself. It's much easier to cut these ahead of time than to do it as you're tying. I'll just cut a bunch of them. And they doesn't really, the length doesn't matter as long as they're going to be longer than, than the, the width of the body in the end. So I'm going to take, I'm going to move these over to my vice area. And I got my fly upside down. The reason you want the fly upside down is because these wraps are going to show more on the underside and the fish isn't going to see the underside as much. So, uh, you know, you, you tie them in, tie them in on, on the underside of the shank because this is the way the fly is going to ride in the water. So I'll start with my darker color. It doesn't matter. And I'm just going to make a figure eight. This is the hardest one to put in. Two turns this way, and I'm gonna turn it, pull it straight, and two turns this way. And then I'm going to pull back and just wrap down over to lock those in place. And I'm gonna take another one, and I'll do this kind of fast. Uh, because we got a lot of pieces to put on here and it's all pretty much the same. You know, start right at the base of the, the, the color prior so that you can get those in there fairly close. Pull that a little bit because it's a little bit off center. Two turns there. And you notice I'm not being real careful about, especially these, uh, these ones at the tail because they're going to be mostly cut off and then I'm going to go with another one <clears throat> two turns there and then you kind of weave the thread in between them two turns there and these should be nice tight turns put a lot of you got you got 3-0 thread here, or 140 denier, so you can put a fair amount of pressure on these. And another one. And you kind of wiggle it in there. Gonna even them out as you go. When you get to the middle of it, you might want to put a little bit bigger one in there. But again, any yarn at all will work for this. I don't know if there's anything special about Antron. But it has a nice little lifelike sparkle to it. And then yeah, I, I think I got room. For Sorry, I, I do. I, I do think there's something special about Antron. Actually, I I, uh -huh. I think Gary Lafontaine was really onto something that there's that translucency and shimmer that is it's just like magical underwater for whatever reason. And, yeah, uh, I, I really I like it. really like I, Antron. I, I do like it. I use it quite a bit. And then the final piece, I think that's enough. And so that's what you're, that's what it's going to look like uh, before you start to do other stuff. And at this point, you can whip finish. And you're done with the tying part of it. 
I could have put those eyes a little closer to the to the front if I wanted to. And you're done with that part. Okay. Over to you, Tim. Yes, sir. Um, well, yeah. Again, I, I'm with Tom on the on the Antron. In, in fact, what the stuff I'm tying with is, it's uh, according to a guy I met, it is the stuff that was used to tie the original La Fontaine Sparkle Pupa. It's called Dazzle Air. It's very hard to get. It's not made anymore. And uh, and this this guy I met out in um, in Idaho. I've just great great guy and knew a lot about it and sent me all sorts of different colors and and two of them uh one's called uh golden rod and the other is called brick uh just are to me are beautiful for this pattern i do uh tie it or, or cut off a, a card width segment um as opposed to a little shorter i i am going to waste some of this material but in the end uh, it just seems to work out better for me so i'm going to take one of the dark start with one of the dark colors and I know Tom is going to have a fit about this, but, but oh, you're I, not going to tie it on top of the hook. I sure as heck am. Um, oh. Anyway, I, I'm going to fold the fold the material, double it over on my tying thread. It just helps me to orient uh, a, a little better. Get that wrap down there, get it positioned, and then same thing as as Tom and just some cross wrap, nice tight cross wraps to get that secured on there like that uh, and then i'm just going to alternate colors as i go down same thing fold it around this this is the absolute trickiest part of this fly well the rubber legs might be a little yeah the rubber legs are the a little trickier part. but um, just get some cross wraps in there. And when I get down onto the the flat part that I created with that 60 pound test mono, it actually gets a good bit easier because it has a flat surface to sit down on. Any questions on there that we could answer while I'm... Ed wants to know if he can cheat with large chenille. I wouldn't recommend it, Ed. What do you think, Tim? Yeah, I, I really wouldn't. Um, these things do... They're, they're not horrible to cast. They're better than the epoxy crabs, I'll tell you that. But um, I'd say keep it as light as possible. Yeah, and the and, chenille is going to fray. Yeah. Um, this is going to be a lot more durable. Ed, Ed, I would just just go get some yarn from the yarn store or something. Yeah. Yeah, the, the Aunt Lydia's, I, I'm, boy, I used to have just skeins and skeins of that stuff. I, know. And it, it's, I don't it's know what happened to gone. mine. Yeah, I, I'm kind of the same way, Tom. It like just disappeared. I know I used a lot back in the day, but yeah, um, it's in the base. I know it's in the basement somewhere. All right, I'm going to do the same thing. Just go up and uh, grab my whip finish tool. So I have what do I have? One, two, three, four, five separate little stations there, alternating colors. Must be easy on a size four. Oh, uh, yeah. Come on, get off there. And then I don't I don't want to get too far ahead here, but what I do is it's why I left it a little everything a little long. I just mm -hmm. pull straight up. I kind of use the eye. And the eyes as a guide go over the top and then snip back down. And most of the time, anyway, 
You got one little short one in there, but it makes for an, a, a, a nice even body side to side. Something like that. I don't know why that yellow one got so short, but it did. I don't think the fish are going to mind. Yeah, if you had trimmed it the right way, you wouldn't have that problem. Yeah, yeah, probably. Well, the other thing, and I, I guess I should probably do this right now, that, that I do like to do is, um, I'm not going to do it right now, but uh, kind of you use my bodkin to pull out the, the cords and separate out the, the yarn, mm -hmm. make it a more like solid body. All right, you're up, yeah. Tom. Okay. All right, so I have this, I have this mess here. And the first thing I'm going to do is take my uh, finger brush and I'm going to, I like to brush and Tim, you're going to do the same thing just to, to kind of meld that yarn together. Kind of removes those gaps in the body and then I'll turn it over and do the same thing to the top. You don't want to completely brush it out, but you do want to. And you notice that that's, it's not even, but it doesn't matter because we're going to trim it. So I brush it out like so. And then I just, um, I just use the, the hook eye as a guide and I just come at a 45, go all the way back. This, this Antron, do you find it's really tough to cut? It, yeah, it can be. It's that, uh, you know, s synthetic, I guess. is. Yeah. So I'm going to cut both sides at on the same angle. And I can do this, you know, by eye fairly easily. Even them out a little bit. And then I'll come in at the tail. And taper that. And taper the other side. And then just round off into a little more of a crab shape. I don't like these real big. I like to keep them fairly small. And this is a size six, so. Just in case and anybody forgot. Yeah, yeah, I don't want people to forget that I'm tying on a smaller hook. Wait, what am I tying on again, Tom? You're tying on a size four, Tim. Oh, okay, thank you. And I'm tying on a size six. Which is smaller. Yeah, it's smaller. It's harder to tie on a size on a size six. All right. You know, again, like most things, you could trim this forever. To even it up, but the fish aren't going to care. Okay. Now I'm going to rotate my vise back in the upright position. I think right, it's your so turn. It's my turn. Okay, yeah, rubber next, legs. Rub, yeah, next step for me, I, I do both. I, I, I'm going to fluff it out as well, but um, before I do. Uh, I, I like to kind of keep the yarn together to put on the rubber legs. It just, for me anyway, it just makes it a little easier. These are kind of interesting, uh, fairly new company. I uh, just met these guys this year and uh, I found this color, which in terms of looking, you know, something like a, uh, a lady crab is, is just kind of <laughs> pretty much right on the money. And, and so I'm going to use these, but you go back over here. Some of them I, I are, are a little delicate. I, I got to be a little careful with them. But what I'm what I'm doing, I'll zoom out so you can actually see this, is I'm going to go like this, come around, and just carefully tie an overhand knot right here, even those sides up if I can. And I, I'm not seating it super, super tight, okay? Uh, I, I do worry about breaking these. Separate the next station up. And I'll do this three times, uh, three pairs of legs. Yeah, 
You know, the original called for white legs. Uh, yeah, white legs with red tips. And and uh, white white legs was in the pattern description too that I sent you, yeah, what, that, what, you were, that you were supposed to follow. What, what, <laughs> I didn't have any white legs, Tom. Well, you know, I, I know I know a company that could have sent you some. Well, I I I was expecting a package, but <laughs> never showed up. I don't know about that. You said you didn't need anything. Well, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want anything. That was the that was the issue. I am I am going to uh I am going to tie some of these lady crab colors because we have those on our striper uh, flats up here too yeah and i i don't know about you but we especially first thing in the spring is when they the the bass really like to you know if they're not too busy with um herring or or bunker or anything like mm -hmm. that they'll Mm -hmm. They'll get up there and eat eat um, clams of all things, mm -hmm. and clam flies work really well. And then these these little uh, calico, or they're not calico crabs; they're lady crabs. What uh, do you use for a, a clam fly? Uh, it's a weird little pattern. It, it's kind of uh, sort of hard to describe. It's just like like a fluffy little ball with different colors in it. It, almost like a glow bug and it, it looks like mm. a, a clam larva if you will not mm. you know no shell um kind of a, a a darker pink spot in the middle and then kind of an awe a beige uh veil around it and and uh it seems to only work in this early springtime uh, Roger has that. a question about yarn size I don't know yarn sizes Roger but you you can tell you can tell by what we're using here. It's the I, I don't know what it, I don't know what it would equate to in a yarn size, but it you they should be. Um, I don't know I can measure them to see. It should be it should be they should be just thick enough so that you can tie a bunch of a bunch of strands on there and uh, you know. Yeah. How, have, how many how many how many cross pieces did you have, Tom? uh one two three four five six okay yeah i i have five and probably could have fit six if that helps out but yeah and keith uh the color combos are uh for permit are uh uh brown and brown and tan brown and olive olive and tan those are gen the general colors that people use but you could experiment with other colors too all brown all tan, whatever. Okay. You're, yep, you're up. I'm up to tie the rubber legs. All right. So I am using white rubber legs. Do you know why I'm using white rubber legs, Tim? I think probably because that was in the original pattern and the list. Yes, that, you that sent was me. in the original <laughs> pattern. And in fact, the pattern description that I sent you. So I am using, I am using white rubber legs. I'm a rebel, Tom. Have been since right. birth. Well, next time you pick a fly, you wait and see what I tie. <laughs> and I'm going to cut three. Uh, some some uh, some uh, tires and some places sell these with uh, four legs, four sets of legs. I like three. I think four is is overdoing it. And. There's a trick to getting these legs to sit properly, and I, I'm tying them. I'm tying them this way on the uh, on the what's going to be the bottom side because the knots don't show. And there's a trick to getting these legs to easily sit right, and that's to tie a square knot instead of just an overhand knot. So you always want to you always want to. And here I'm going. I'm going left over right. And I'm going to draw that down. And just as Tim said, you have to be careful. Now, if I left it like that, they would kind of hang off to an angle. 
But if I tie a, if I come in and tie another knot right over left, so that I'm tying a square knot. Now those legs will sit a lot better off to the side, or they should. <laughs> Not sitting that much better than they did the first time. And then you just leave those hanging. And you come in and you find another gap between those yarns. And left over right. Make sure you cinch it down good, right over left. Just let them hang. And then a final one, same thing. I'll come in, in here, oops. Pull them a little bit to get it to go through the yarn. Left over right. Cinch it down. Make sure you don't catch any fibers there. And see, there it's at an angle now. But if I come up and do right over left to get a square knot, They hang a lot better. At least they should. And you can adjust them here before you're done. Should I stop here? Um, no, keep on going. I, I'm just just so folks know that I mean they can see me concentrating here, but I, I didn't want to waste any time. I am fluffing out the yarn at this point, just uh, so I don't have to do it later. Sa same uh, as you did, basically. That is a that is a, a behind the scenes fluffer. Dad, <laughs> that's, that's not allowed. Is that a party foul of some kind? <laughs> yes. So uh, once I get these legs in there, then I'm going to take my super glue. And yes, you can use UV resin. Although I don't think UV resin plays really well with rubber legs. It doesn't seem to hold them. And I'm just going to come and make sure that sinks down into the yarn base and then I get my eyes and my head all at once so that I'm done with uh, putting any adhesive on there. And you can, while that super glue is still setting, you can move these legs if you want, but they look pretty good. I'll show you what they look like from the top. Okay. You wanna, you wanna go, and then I'll yeah. I'll finish. Yeah, uh, I'll, yeah I, I'm I'll I'm real final. close. I just have a couple little yeah, I am uh, too. Little little tweaks to do here. Um, mm -hmm. If I, I'm fairly even here, but if I have anything that's you know really out of out of kilter, I'll I'll, tr I'll trim it off just a little bit and and kind of get things evened up again. I, you, you know, you got you got to know when to stop trimming. Just, now, did you have a professional fluffer come in and fluff this? <laughs> no, Tom, I did not. You did, but it you yourself? can see how nice and okay. fluffy it is. You you did that behind the scenes. I didn't. Well, I didn't see what was actually. Going on. It, it's kind of a, a, a the way I do it is first with a bodkin separate the yarn strands. Mm -hmm. But one of the coolest tools uh, for fluffing yarn. And you kind of, you start out at the end and then work your way in. But mm -hmm. is one of these eyelash brushes. Mm -hmm. to, to, to me, it's it's um, a good bit better than even a, a you know, a flea comb. And mm -hmm. finer finer little points on it. I, I really like mm. it as a fly tying tool. And eyelash brush. Huh. Yeah, eyelash nice. brush, yeah. Not... Uh, So yeah, just a little little fluffed out. Then I'll do the same thing. I I, I prefer just me, um, Sally Hansen as opposed to the the super glue. And but I'll run a bead 
all the way down the middle here over the dumbbell eyes then flip the whole thing over and on the horrible looking side that will be up but that, yeah that's the side the fish are going to see yeah but to me a little little bit of you know tan thread and they're going to smell that sally hansen's Ugh. yeah because yeah, that's right. They can't smell super glue, but they can smell Sally Hansen. Super glue doesn't doesn't have an odor after it dries. It doesn't. Larry asks why white legs. Larry, because the original <laughs> had white legs and, and Del Brown caught 513 permit on it. And it's good enough for me. Yes, Roger. We know we, we're going, we're going a little bit, uh, a little bit crazy here today. Okay. And the my last step here, I promise, is I'm going to actually use these those little orange tips, yeah. so I don't have to to put any red nail polish. I'm going to try to keep just a little bit. I'm going to miss on this one. I don't want the legs to be too long. And then on the other side, about the same length. And I don't know. I I really think, and maybe Dell would argue, but I, I think that you can go a little longer with the legs, almost like mm -hmm. a you know, caricature, just get a little bit yeah. more mo movement uh -huh. in there and, and let her go that way. Yeah, I've seen him with some pretty long legs on him. Yeah, yeah. Just to I mean, movement is such a big thing, and I, I think that's yeah. what a permit would pick up um, would be the movement as much as the shape or anything. Yeah. Um, and so this is going to ride like this. So the legs kind of stay up a little bit mm -hmm. in theory. You're up. Okay. All right. I'll finish up. Um, what I'm going to do is uh, take a marker. I'm going to back up a little bit here. No. Back the vice up a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to pull the legs off to the side and just figure out about how long I want my legs to be. And then I'm going to mark them. And then I like to, uh, you don't want to pull on these when you do this. But I, I grab them together and I twist them to make sure that I twist them both ways to make sure that I get red on all sides. And then to make sure that I do get it the same on the other side, I don't like doing them all together, but I'm just going to touch these together. And then I can see where I want to put the red on the other side. And you can make this red a little bit longer because you're going to trim on the end of the red. So. And that doesn't have any smell when it dries either, right? I don't know alcohol based i don't think it would it's so sally hansen's, but... <laughs> yeah well sally hansen's is not alcohol based it's acetone based actually tom I, I i hate to tell you but it is alcohol based sally hansen's it doesn't it smell is, like it alcohol is, after it dries yeah it's the number one ingredient in it and uh it actually thins wow. really well with alcohol Wow. And then I'm just going to cut these at the end of the red so that I have red on the ends and do the same thing on these other ones. And there we go. Even out those legs if you want. These look a little long. I'm just going to take a little piece off these. And there is the uh, original and quintessential notice, <laughs> notice that the side the fish sees I, the side the fish sees there's no knot 
you know, it's nice and nice and crabby looking. Huh. Anyway, do you ever we do they, this? Yeah. Do you think they take it on the drop where they'd see the other side? No, I fish them on the bottom. Yep. Probably never take them on the drop. I, I just fish them on the bottom. <laughs> okay. <laughs> There so, we go. Should we do the spin for the vote? We're doing the spin, but let's let's do a little let's do a dissolve if we can to the real thing. Uh that's that's uh that's a New Jersey crab. We're not trying to imitate a New Jersey crab. No, 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 no. Oh, look at the leg. Look at the fine dark markings on oh my gosh. Oh, I'm going to show my good side. You're showing your good side there. So it lands like that. Actually, I think they really, uh, I could be wrong about this, Tom, but I think they, they're they going to dip head down like that. True. And which, you know, if, it, if it's pulled along the bottom, would we'll just, you know, add to the movement and everything else. Um, Julia, the voting is up, right? Okay. Oh, Julia is muted. You're muted, Julia. <laughs> I said the voting is up. May the best tire win. It's like it's a um, close one. I'll come back in a, in a minute or so once everyone's gotten to vote. So nervous. Oh, me too. One more little fade. Let me, maybe I should zoom in. Zoom in on my beautiful body. Look at that. No, nothing showing there. Oh, that's funny. My, my clear image zoom isn't projecting on it isn't no i think mine yeah mine obviously is yeah mine's not that's that's funny. the hideous hideous underside of mine or the top side there we go one last spin folks Okay, I'm going to leave it there. Nice and slow. All right, are we ready for the winner? We're ready, I think. It was a, it was a close one. It was oscillating a lot. and uh, But I think we have a, a clear winner. Brrr, Tom! There you go. Oh, my God. <laughs> See, Tim? You should have stuck what, with the original. I we know, of, I know. We had a lot of traditionalists in here. They yeah. both look great, though. As Mike Sullivan just said, they're both great ties. Yeah, I like that. I, I like that color. I like that color combo. I'm going to try that. Yeah, it's... I'm uh, going to definitely try that color combo. I actually, in thinking about it, because it's it's been a while, I think that's where my... Aunt Lydia's rug yarn all went was tying these things about three or four mm. years ago. Um, mm. And because because I had some different colors that were 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 even better better than this for the lady crabs. But congratulations, Tom. Well done. Well, thank you, Tim. Thank that, you. That, that very much looks like a merkin, a real merkin. <laughs> Dell's Mer Dell Brown's merkin. A real market. <laughs> well, thank you, everyone. Thank you, yes, everyone, thank you. for your uh, for your participation. We we love to hear your comments, and uh, we hope. I know that some of you tied along. I know Ed did. I hope you made that chenille work, Ed. Um, but um, you know, we really appreciate you um, coming in and and asking us questions and tying along um it's really it's really fun to do this tim and i always look forward to these right tim 
Yep. <laughs> so it's Tim's pick next. <laughs> it's it's Tim's pick next. Yeah, I'm I'm uh, heading heading south. So it it uh, are we? We, we pushed it out a week. Ago. Okay, pushed out a week. So it'll be the second okay. week in May. Okay. Um. And uh, next Monday, I am tying a um, a bluing olive uh, sparkle done with all with EP fiber instead of uh, deer hair for the wing. So re very easy tie if, you're, if you've been frustrated with comparadons and uh, comparadons and, and sparkle duns using deer hair, because it's sometimes hard to get the right material and, and people have trouble fussing with it. I think you'll be really, uh, really happy to see this uh, size 18 uh, bluing olive done, emerging done tied with uh, EP fiber. Uh, I use them a lot. They're very, really durable. They show up well in the water. And um, I think they work as well as deer hair. So, have you, just, you have uh, you done that? Have you done well, that? I, I, yeah, one uh, video I just did, I think last week was a. Uh, it, it's really just an an Adams, but rather than hackle tip. Oh, wings, I saw that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I use the EP fibers and am absolutely loving the. Um, what we're we're about to. St uh, the, with the weather, we were about to start with the Hendrickson's and the Quill Gordons here. Um, they started about a week and a half ago when we had some warm days and then cold shut it all down. And uh, But I, I was fishing them uh, then and they just look great on the water with that with that uh, EP fiber wing and so much. E the, I, I do like a furled wing and then snip it and um, and just just much easier and i think much more durable than than a hackle tip wing i know it's not traditional for an adams but i i really like the the way it looked and the way it fishes yeah and it's not traditional for a sparkle done or a compare done either but yeah. um it seems to perform just as well yeah. and you can get the same shape and you can trim it and it's durable and yeah well and that's that's another material like we were saying with antron that's got this natural translucency and shimmer that even natural materials don't have and mm -hmm. it just looks lifelike and catches light and and uh yeah I like it a lot all right everyone well i want to uh, again thank you all we'll see you on monday and then i'm going to be gone for a couple Mondays in April as well. I'm going not as far south as Tim, but I'm going south um, to host a, I got a hosted trip uh, to uh, to um, Tarpon Key in Belize. Neat so, place. Which is, which is full, unfortunately. The trip is full, but uh, they only take 10, they only take 10, uh, 10 anglers. So, um, are you going to be shooting video down there, to Tom? Or no, nope, not shooting nope. any video. Just hosting okay. a trip just and relaxing. Good. I'm not shooting any video this time. I spent two weeks in Chile shooting video all day long. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> it wears on you. Yeah, so uh, I'm I'm glad to be just just along along for the ride for a change. All right, everyone. Guys, thank you very much. That was fun. Thank you. Thank you again, and uh, we'll see you soon.